All right, what's up everyone? We're back here for another one of these played recap videos. So as you guys know, this is kind of going to be our new style of video. We're still going to be doing the psychology videos, but I want to kind of focus on these more in depth advanced videos for members only. And yeah, let's take it from there. So what I want to first start with is my top trade of the day, which was GMDA. So what I want to do is I want to kind of draw my lines first to show you how I was able to determine what my entries and exits will be. And then we're gonna show you the entries and exits. We're gonna go over it. We're gonna talk about the other opportunities on the day. And we're gonna talk about, you know, what you guys are struggling with in this market so that we could fix it. So as you guys know, the market has been extremely hot lately, right? It's because we had CXAI go crazy, right? So let's take a look at this. Went well, from nearly $2 to $70, right? And you gotta be thinking to yourself, what the fuck is going on, right? But these are the type of stocks that ignite the market, right? These are the type of stocks that get people to say, oh my God, I can't miss the next one. When the next one comes, I'm not gonna miss it. I'm not gonna miss it. I'm not gonna miss it. And what ends up happening is the next one is never as strong as the first one, which is never as strong as the third one, which is never as strong as the second one. The fourth one is never as strong as the third one, which is never as strong as the second one, which is never as strong as the first one. So as every single day passes, guys, these get weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker, okay? This creates an edge for us short bias traders because the chances are that the CXAI happens again is very, very rare. It happens one time in that certain market cycle and then it kind of waits until the next market cycle. So if inexperienced traders, new traders, people that don't know anything about the market are like, yo, CXAI went to the moon. This ABCDAY is gonna go to the moon. I gotta buy it, I gotta buy it, I gotta buy it. And what ends up happening, guys, the inverse freaking happens, okay? All the other stocks start tanking, okay? Start tanking. So let's go over it. SAI, look at this stock, guys, SAI was same similar scenario, $2 to $7, and all the way back down to $3, okay? Sympathy play, okay? What was another one that was moving? IDAI, look at this, IDAI guys, from two to eight, back down to freaking threes, bro. So these are the best possible opportunities as a short bias trader that you could have at any given moment. It only happens after a stock like CXAI happens because CXAI catches everyone off guard and longs get overconfident, okay? So shorts are afraid to short stocks because this thing just went to 70 and longs are super excited to buy stocks and this thing just went to 70 and the inverse happens, the inverse happens. So all these other crazy runners that happen usually do not last the test of time compared to the main runners. So these markets are the markets that I make the most money in. I make the most money in these markets because I am sizing the hell up when the primary stock is dead and these side stocks, these sympathy play stocks come around because they are never as strong as the primary stock, okay? So if I know that after the crazy short squeeze happens, that there will be 10 to 15 stocks that try to run and fail, wouldn't it make more sense for me to go bazooka size on these secondary stocks? Because the odds of them failing are more in higher probability. Does that make sense, guys? Does that make sense? So now let's go through the previous sympathy plays that happened all of this week so that we could compare if this thesis is indeed active. Let's look at PTPI. Look at this stock, guys went from a dollar to eight dollars and crashed okay poai stock went from 30 cents to a dollar and crashed okay aud stock went from bro, 55 cents to two dollars and back down to 60 cents okay we're not done here yet gfai stock went from five dollars all the way up to 30 dollars right what else is there i'm still going through the list IMPX, IMPX, look at this thing guys, 30 cents all the way up and then back down. Do you see the logic behind that? The logic behind it is that long bias traders are looking for the next runner. Short bias traders are too shell shocked, but these markets, these times are the absolute best possible times to be shorting because these stocks that are running now, 
These crazy stocks are all garbage companies, man. They're garbage companies. These are these are the absolute best stocks to short, guys. These are the absolute best stocks to short because the edge is in our favor. So as a short bias trader, I am not looking to trade the high momentum stock. I am looking to trade the easiest, highest probability setups that already broke down pre-market, which brings us into GMDA today. Let's draw our lines. Let's make our plan. What was my plan? Let me pull up my plan very quickly so you see it. Look at the plan. Looking for a potential short 170, 180, 190 with a 205 stop. Where did I short it? 170s into resistance. Remember the resistance line we drew earlier? That's where I shorted. Okay. Stock tanked. Stock bounced. Stock tried to push over VWAP in the morning. Failed. So I started aggressively adding to my winner. When I saw this stuff candle happen, it was not before the stuff candle. It was after the stuff candle. When I saw that stuff candle, I added my final size. Covered on the dip, right? Remember, support, support. That was a support line we drew earlier. I want to buy on support and I want to short a resistance. So I bought it at support. And as it started bouncing back to resistance, shorted it, covered it again in support. And that's it, baby. That's it. That's it. Short, sweet recap. Let me know what you guys think about these recaps. Let me know if you guys are finding value in these recaps. And again, I'm not going to stop doing the other YouTube recaps. So this is just going to be like in addition you know, when I have the time, uh, I'm going to do these recaps. But to be honest, guys, in the last two, three days, I've been waking up at 4 a.m. to watch the pre-market action. And when I first started trading, I'd wake up at 4 a.m. for three years straight, without doubt. I'll wake up at 4 a.m. And now the markets are now in that place where you have to wake up at 4 a.m. to be able to watch this price action. So I'm a little bit tired, guys. Been up already for, what, like six hours, seven hours. It's exhausting. But... Last two days, I made almost 50 grand. So if you're telling me that you get to wake up 4 a.m. and make 50 grand, I mean, hey, guys, I'll wake up at fucking 3 a.m. if you're going to give me 60 grand, right? So that's it, guys. I'm going to wrap this up, and I will see you back in the room. Thanks.